Hello friends, myself Professor Vinod Pillai. Welcome to C++ programming session. In today's session, I'll be continuing with my previous sessions that is, I'll be talking about file I.O. I do expect you have already seen my part 1 and part 2 of the file I.O. of session. In part 1 and part 2, I've shown you different examples, how we can read and write character data, how to read and write integer values, and how to deal with end of the files, and what are the importance of three different classes, OFStream, IFStream, and FStream classes. I will be continuing from those sessions only. That means I will not be explaining all those concepts. So I do expect that if you are attending the part 3 of my session, you have already have some knowledge of these sessions or you have already gone through my sessions. So let's start today's session. Today's session, I will be concentrating some of the important functions of file IO in C++. That is, I will be talking about read and write functions. I will be talking about seekg, tellg, seekp, tellp. And I will be showing an example in which I have shown all these three examples of it. So let's get started. What are the advantages of why I should use read and write functions when I can use a simple functions? What are the what exactly read and write is providing that which is not being provided by most of the other functions? That is the read and write functions help us to read and write data into the files that to in a block format or you can say in a byte format. You can say that with the help of write method, I can write a block of data into the files in the form of bytes. That is the biggest advantage a read and write methods are giving compared to other methods. So what advantage it is giving? First and foremost, because it is concept, here the data is stored on the basis of the size that is in the bytes form. So it will, it is, but naturally it is quite faster compared to normal reading and writing operations. Second thing you are writing, you are getting here is like if you want to write the data into the form of bytes, then what value is there in the data is not important. Only thing is whatever the bytes, how much, suppose I am saying I want to write integer value. So in, t in the integer variable I am storing 4000, 2000, 3000 doesn't matter. It only takes that much space only that a integer is required to be stored. So space wise also it is quite different compared to normal reading and writing. I'll not go in much detail into that but these are the major advantages you are getting and if suppose someone says I want to write a block of data that means if someone says I want to write a complete array into the file then you don't have to write n number of commands to write one first index second index third index you simply say I want to write this data that complete array will be written into the files the similar vanny if someone says you want to write an object okay in that case also it is quite possible that is you can store a complete class object into the file and similarly you can read a complete class object from the files the similarly if you are using read and write methods you can randomly move up and back using the with the help of cg tellg tell seekp and tellp before getting into that let's see what read and write can does to us okay so the read and write method is available in fstream class and ofstream and ifstream class also i hope so you know that ifstream is only for reading so it the read method is only available so how you will do you will create an object of fstream you specify the file name okay yeah uh, the dat is an extension generally given when you are dealing with binary data so i prefer that you should go for that only I have explained what are the advantages of different types of modes. I will not repeat here. So I have used in out and at because I want to uh, write data in between also. Okay, so here is how the syntax goes of the write. So I specify obj and obj. So this is the general syntax of how we use to use to write data into the files with the help of write method. Here what you have to do is like if suppose I am expecting that obj is an object of a class. So consider this something like this. Okay. So obj is an object I want to write the object or whatever obj is having a value completely into the files. So I will write f out that is the file streams object. I say write. So two things I have to pass. One is the address of the obj that to be casted in the character pointer. So I've said character star and address of obj. So I've done m person obj. Second comes he says like whatever data you are sending, what is the size of the data you have to specify to me. So I said size of an obj. So complete obj will be written into the files. So this is the general format. The same way the read does. Only thing is like you have to specify instead of write the read is done. A complete block of data is written to the obj. 
so from the file read will take the data from the file and store it into the obj so this is the general format so i hope so you have understood the concepts of read and write we'll be seeing an example and i'll be explaining more on details on that now if you knowing about the general concepts of files you must be knowing that each and every file operations or you can say file has two major types of pointers in c++ that is one is read pointer and one is write pointer the read pointer is help to reading the data from the files and write pointer is helpful for writing data as well to the files with the help of these read and write pointers we are actually getting the data or you we are actually able to write data into the files so whenever someone says to write to a particular position you have to make sure that the write pointer is at particular position if someone says you want to read some particular data then the read pointer has to be there at particular location now with the help of fstream you have know that we can do a random read and write operations okay and with the help of these four methods we can randomly move our pointers read and write both pointers to at our desired position how the first comes the seek g seek g is a special pointer which is basically used for the reading but with the help of seek g i can move my read pointer to my desired position the similarly there is a seek p only difference is here it will able to move me allow me to move the right pointer the tell g and tell p is similarly that is tell g helps to tell me exactly where is my read pointer correct position so if you don't know what is your current read pointer's position tell g help us to get this thing done similarly tell p also does the same thing only difference is tell p helps to get the current pointer of the right pointer okay now what are the arguments or you can say parameters in these methods so first we'll see tell g and tell p because that's quite easy tell g and tell p does not have any arguments simply you say f out or the whatever the files object dot tell g it will return the total bytes above it or you can say current position you should make sure that all these methods works in the format of bytes so you don't expect it to him to give you answer like 1 2 3 whatever it is value is giving it is the total bytes it has already been read and it is the current position so if someone says i want to go to particular location then you also have to specify him the value in the format of bytes only so that is very important that's why these methods are more related to read and write because in that position we write the data also in the bytes format so it is a combination this 4 plus 2 6 makes the best combination for reading and writing byte values so now comes the then the two methods that is seek g and seek p now the seek g has two arguments even in one argument method is also available but majorly people use the two arguments the two arguments is the first argument is how much bytes you want to jump okay and second is the from which position so which position it takes three values you can pass i use scope resolution begin means it goes from the begin of the file and then whatever value you have specified in the first argument that much bytes it will jump but it will jump only for the read pointer because g is for read pointer similarly you can say uh, wherever i'm standing current position jump from there then i use scope resolution current and if you want to go from the end of the file and you want to jump backwards then you can specify like here as done minus size of an object that is one size one object how much space it is taking that much you jump backwards from where from the end of the file so it first goes to the end of the file and then jumps in the backward direction okay so i hope so you know these all methods are mainly being used okay for reading and writing at particular desired positions as per the user's requirements in my next session i have gone through an example in which i have used all these functions uh, in different positions for inserting and updating and deleting and all those operations in a file so you'll be getting more details from that session okay so let's start now the example what i have shown mainly for this part that is read and write how we can do it there is a question one comes in your mind is like are we really able to write an object into the files or does we able to really write a complete array of block of data with the help of read or write so i have created an example in which i have shown both first i have created a employee class which is having two variables id and salary it is having a default constructor a destructor a set data and display okay so whoever calls the set data it simply says see out and see in the enter let me enter the id please enter the salary and when whoever calls the display displays the id and salary in the integer main i have created an array which is having five values okay so for writing the into array i say fstream please open the file one dot dat file in the out mode so whatever data is there it will destroy and a new one dot dat file is ready so if you see here only one time i am writing f obj dot write character star ampersand array 
that is the address of the array that to cast into character pointer and the complete array sizes you can get with the help of size of so by giving this single command it will write all the five data into the file my task is over so I'm simply closing the file now to check whether it has been written I've used a read now same way I am opening fobj because fobj is object of fstream it can be opened in read mode also so here I'm using open method I'm telling him to open the file in the read mode I've created another array array 2 so that to make sure that it is not overwriting the values only so this array is completely new and it is not having any values I'm saying fobj dot read and m person array 2 so all the values will be read and stored into array 2 and same way like write instead of only I have specified read to make sure that value is there I've just simply used a for loop and just try to display the, all the values of array 2 after task is complete I'm just closing the fobg and I'm closing the file now to write I've tried to write whether I'm able to write the the object into the file or not I'll be showing the output in the one one single run only so again I've opened the same file in the right mode so all the data has been removed I'm creating an employee object here I'm entering all the values in employee object that means even will now have values then I'm simply saying please write the even and similarly I'm closing the file I'm again opening the file in the read mode I'm creating another object and now in the reading time I'm saying please read all the values into e2 whether to whether e2 is having the values or not I'm simply saying e2 dot display my task is over I'm closing the file so let's run the program and let's try whether it's working or not okay so I compiled it so compilation is done let's run it so it's saying that all the values has been ran from the file okay so 10 20 30 40 50 is the value is been entered into the file and that value is read from it and it gone to array 2 if you remember my code it is gone to array 2 okay and I've just used the for loop to display all the values so that is working so array is working now what it is asking me an ID so I'm entering ID that is employee data it is being asking now it is being written and then it is finally being displayed so here you can say the array is also working and the object is also working okay so as my for my previous explanation I've shown here how we can read and write complete array and object into the files using the method read and write and even I've explained you the CG and TLG and CXP and TLP the later of my part will be explaining you an example in which I've used all these methods more detailed one if you still any queries you can ask me through email or post us the post a comment to this video all the code related to this video will be found at my blog we know the best please don't forget to subscribe my videos Thank you and have a nice day.